2020 uh, to strip the church of her religious freedom. Amen. But uh, I thank God for his mercy. Amen. Thank God for his mercy and that uh, here we are today and uh, without having to worry whether it's legal or not. Shame for us as Americans to ever even have to think, is it legal for me to go to church? Amen. I don't care what's going on in this world. Amen. But uh, thank God uh, that little storm has passed. But I'll tell you what, the devil knows what works. And don't be surprised when all this mess happens again. They're already talking about this new wave now. This, what do they call it? The var second variant? Or the new, new variant or whatever it is. I'll tell you, the devil's a liar. Come on. Amen. Amen. So Amen. praise the Lord. We're going to overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. If I learned anything uh, in the 2020 shutdown or pandemic, I learned this. No matter what the news says, don't you ever shut your doors. Amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. And uh, I'll tell you, we, we did for about from uh, what? Mm, I think in April, maybe the end of March into April. But by the end of April, April we opened back up and God broke revival out. And uh, sure enough, God was pouring it out over on Baker Street, moved us in over here, and uh, God helped us to buy this building in the midst of all that junk going on. Praise the Lord. So I'll tell you, it don't matter. Just like Joseph, it doesn't matter what the circumstances are in your life. You can choose to overcome. You can choose to be a victim of the circumstance, or you can choose to say, you know what, God is in control. I'm going to trust Him. How many of you want to trust God today? Amen. Amen. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power. Say power. power. Love. Say love. love. And what's this? A sound mind. Uh, say a sound mind. Sound mind. With the help of the Lord today, I just want to preach for a moment or two upon the thought of the spirit of fear. The spirit of fear. I'm going to ask if Sister Mary would please pray over this word today. Heavenly Father, we pray for you this morning, Father. Thank you, God, for your presence that we feel already, Lord. I pray, God, that you would pour out your anointing on Pastor and grace for this word, Father. I pray, God, that you would receive it for the hearts that are willing and able to receive it, Father God, and what you receive this word and apply it to our life, God, to our spiritual walk, Father God. I pray, Lord, that you would I mean, seven <laughs> years old. And before she was asking me when she was going to turn 17, she asked me the other day when she was going to turn 20. I, I said, girl, you got 13 more years of being daddy's little girl before you're 20 years old. So just don't quit trying to grow up so fast. But she did learn. She finally learned how to ride her bike without training wheels. Amen. Yeah. Ripped those things off and she never ride. I guess she figured once she turns seven, she's going to start growing up a little bit. <laughs> but uh, on Kayla's birthday, we started the day off by, guess where we went? Starbucks. We went to Starbucks. Our target wasn't good, I guess, no. But we went to Starbucks and she got her favorite drink. A large white chocolate hot cocoa at the children's temperature. Amen. I used to be able to get her the smaller, the kid size, but now that she's all grown up at the age of seven, she needs the large size. And uh, after we went to Starbucks, we ran around town and we went to Target and we went to Walmart. We ate lunch at Subway. But finally at around six o'clock, it was party time. And uh, we had pizza, we had snow cones, we had cake pops, and 
a giant water slide bounce house and uh, she just got spoiled with all kinds of gifts and once again just thank you guys so much for loving our family like, like you do and uh, but uh, all throughout Tuesday uh, I couldn't help but my mind would go back and it would think about the day that we've got we got a call uh, for our daughter Michaela a social worker called us and said that there was a little girl who had been abandoned by her mother at the hospital and they wanted to know if we would be interested in fostering this child with the intent of adopting her. And we said, of course, we, we would love to do so. And they said, well, she is an African-American child. So we don't care what color she is. We, we, we love to adopt her and uh, praise the Lord. But uh, they said, there's something you need to know. This little girl does have some serious health uh, concerns that we need to tell you about. And we said, well, what is it? They said, well, her biological mother was a prostitute. Therefore, she may have HIV. Then they said that we also took x-rays and we discovered that there was a honeycomb spot on one of her lungs and that one day she would possibly need a lung transplant. And whenever Miranda and I found out about those health concerns, we were unsure of what to do. Lord, how serious is this honeycomb? Lord, how do we know whether or not this little girl will have HIV. We've got to make up our, our minds whether we're going to take her without knowing uh, certain things. And uh, what if this little girl doesn't live long? Are we going to be willing to bury a child, if you will, in a few years or so? And what if she has HIV and somehow she transmits it, whether through outside, maybe she gets a cut on her arm and the other kids are playing or whatever, and, and she transfers some of that HIV onto her other siblings. And these were the kind of thoughts that would run through anybody's mind in our shoes, but they were, they were running through our minds, and, and we just did not know what to do. Have you ever been at a time in your life when you're faced with a decision and you just didn't know what to do? Well, we told the social worker, please just give us a few days to pray and to think about it. And they agreed, thank God. And the following day, though, as I was working for Mission Lennon, I went into a mechanic shop. And if you know anything about a mechanic shop, they don't usually have scripture calendars on the wall. They got nasty calendars on the walls. And sure enough, that this mechanic, he wasn't even a Christian man, but he had a Christian calendar up on his wall. And upon the picture section, it said, 2 Timothy 1 and 7, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power of love and a sound mind. As soon as I saw that calendar, Sister Marlene, I called Miranda and I said, baby, let's take this little girl. God hasn't given us the spirit of fear, but power of love and a sound mind. Did you ever get that picture uploaded, babe? Uh, no. Okay. All right, uh, let's give Miranda hands down for that. All right, <laughs> or a thumbs down. But oh, little Michaela, she was so small, so frail. She had tubes just going up her nose inside of her little body. And I picked her up and I held her in my arms and I got my hand and I just laid it right on her chest. And I just said, Father, in the name of Jesus, heal these little lungs. Make them whole. I didn't pray a long, drawn-out prayer. I wasn't concerned about impressing people with my uh, vocabulary. I just said a simple, short prayer. Father, touch these lungs in the name of Jesus. Make her whole. Well, the next day, it was time to pick her up. And we went to the hospital, and sure enough, we're, we're getting her all load up, loaded up. And I asked the doctor in there, and I, I said, can you please give us a little bit more information regarding these health issues? And they said, yes, actually we can. They said, first of all, we did test her for HIV, and she does not have it. So we said, oh, praise the Lord for that. Lord. And then they said, and the interesting thing is that yesterday on our records, we, were, we, we, noticed, we noticed a honeycomb that was upon her lungs. 
But this morning when we took another set of x-rays, that honeycomb spot was gone. Oh, yeah. And then they said, so we sent her to another x-ray machine, a person that is more experienced to take more x-rays of Michaela's lungs. And sure enough, they just confirmed that there was something on there yesterday, but miraculously today, that honeycomb spot has been removed. Can you lift up your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. You see, I would have never got to witness that miracle, though, if I would have let a spirit of fear get a hold of my heart and my mind. Brothers and sisters, fear is a spirit. Come on. I said fear is a spirit. And that spirit of fear must be addressed by spiritual means. I want to talk about a spirit of fear. Number one, today I want to tell you that the spirit of fear will keep you from the blessings of God. Amen. How many know God wants to bless you? Oh, come on. Uh, I'm not no charismatic name and claim it, blab it, grab it, but I, I do believe God is a blesser. Hello? God wants to bless you. He wants to bless you financially. He wants to bless your marriage. He wants that same blessing to rub off on your kids and your grandchildren. That's the blessing of the Lord. Amen. You can pass that down. I believe that. Oh, but the spirit of fear, it'll keep you from the blessings of God. In Genesis chapter number 12, verses 1 through 3, the Lord said to Abram, get thee out of your country and from your kindred. In other words, get away from your family, Abraham, and from your father's house unto a land that I will show you. And I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. Verse 3, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be Less. Oh yes, God was saying to Abraham, leave those false gods behind. Leave that idolatry behind. Leave your family, your influences, your upbringing, your heritage. Abraham, leave it all behind and go to a land in which I will show you. God said to Abraham, as long as you'll be obedient unto my voice, I will bless you. I will make your name great in all the earth. So what did Abraham do? He did what God told him to do. He obeyed the voice of God and God blessed him because of it. How many know blessings come whenever we obey God? Hello? Oh yes, you see, but if Abraham would have allowed a spirit of fear to keep him where he was, he would have never become the, the man that we know of, the father of faith. He would have never had a son named Isaac. He would have never been able to experience God's protection, God's presence, and God's provision like he did. Fear would have kept Abram from the blessings of the Lord. And church, God told me to tell you this today. If you allow that spirit of fear to dominate your mind and your heart, it will keep you from the blessings that God I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt, God had this building waiting for New Hope Church. Nothing can change my mind. God had this building in waiting for New Hope Church. But whenever the COVID thing hit, this blessing was on the balance, you could say. If we're going to obey God and get back into his house, God's going to pour out his spirit, and eventually he's going to just give us this church. But if we would have allowed the spirit of fear to keep us at home, sitting on our backside watching internet church, we would have never been able to move over here to this building. You see, the blessings of God were dependent on whether or not we were going to be controlled by a spirit of fear. God didn't call you to be controlled or directed by fear or stress or anxiety, but he called you to be men and women of faith. Oh, Abraham never did be able to see the land in which God was leading him at that time. He didn't know where God was leading him, but yet he trusted in the Lord. And you may not recognize where God is leading you right now. Maybe you're like Joseph being led to foreign land, foreign territory. But you've got to keep the faith and keep trusting in the Lord. I'm a child of the King. I'm a daughter of the King. I will not fear because God is the one directing my steps. 
keep you safe. Amen. The other day, whenever I went to pick up Brother Louie, <laughs> Louie, I love you, brother. <laughs> I love you. I go to pick up Louie on a date where he's got to get out of his apartment. You know what Louie's doing? He's laughing and praising the Lord. <laughs> He is laughing and praising the Lord. And before we even had an apartment set up, you know what Brother Louie did? And I'm not trying to just build him up and this and that. He's a humble brother. I know that. I'm just trying to look at this brother. Amen. Oh, but uh, sure enough, Brother Louie, he come up and he says, Pastor, here's my tithes for the month. You see, he's faithful in his giving. You want to know why God's faithful to provide him a residency? Because he's faithful to the will and the calling of God. Can you say amen? Brothers and sisters, God never called us to be dominated by a spirit of fear. But God has given us power. He's given us love. And he's given us a sound mind. Some of us think we got the power. We ain't afraid to dance and jump around and speak in tongues every now and then. Some of us got the love. We love our brothers and sisters. We love to come to church. But yet a lot of us don't have that sound mind. We're being torn day and night by the devil. What's going to happen if this check don't come in the mail? What's going to happen if this thing doesn't go through? What's going to happen if this fails and that fails? What are you going to do in six months from now? What are you going to do in two years from now? We need that same power, love, and a sound mind. You can't pick and choose from God's buffet. You've got to have it all, but the good news is it is available. God has not given you the spirit of fear. The devil gave it to you. God gave you power, love, and a sound mind. So let me ask you something. How's your head today? Come on. How's your head? Is it all confused? Stressed out? I'll tell you why. There's a lack of trust in God. Come on. Two weeks ago, I had a spiritual headache. <laughs> How many of you ever had a spiritual headache? <laughs> you start a church. <laughs> you, you pastor people. Good people. Hello. Say, this is a good church. But even good churches can give a pastor a headache. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Never been more frustrated in all my years in ministry. And I'm not going to get into the, the depths of it. But I found myself being controlled in my mind by junk that I had nothing to do with. Hello, somebody. And yet here I am, my mind's being beat down. My mind is being beat down. Oh, and frustrated. Did you know? Oh, mama, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I had at least five different people say, you know what? I won't even be back to the church. Don't worry about it. Whoa. Come on. And I'm not casting stones. I'm just telling you some of the junk that I've had to deal with. I'm talking about when your mind is under attack. Oh, I have the power. Jesus. 
Jesus. Uh, Amen. So you've got the power, you've got the love. Keep the sound mind. Come on. I preach to the church because you have a church in Pakistan. I think I'm going to preach it to the, the youth here. But about a rat trap. <laughs> How many of you ever seen a rat trap? Yeah, I know Sean has seen one. <laughs> a rat trap. Who likes rats in here? Oh, okay. It's Kendra. Let's all look at her and say, Ooh, weird. I'm <laughs> just kidding. I'm, how many of you love Sister Kendra? Oh, she's a sweetheart. I love her. And don't she sing so pretty? Yes. Mm -hmm. She does. And uh, gets it from her mom and dad. Amen. No. It sure does. <laughs> don't Jay sing real pretty? No. Yes. Good. That was a mixed reaction. But we love Brother Jay too. <laughs> Uh, I'll tell you, this thing's real pretty. Or not pretty. Handsome. Sad. Amen. Yes, you do, dude. Don't shake your head. I'll rebuke you right here for everybody. <laughs> Got some good kids here. Amen? Amen. Good, good kids. And, uh, oh, but uh, I'll tell you, God didn't give us the spirit of fear, power, love, and sound mind. So keep your, how do you keep a sound mind? By keeping your mind on the things of God. Come on. Not on the trouble, not on the difficulty, not on the stress. By keeping your mind on the things of God, Isaiah the prophet said, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. So where is your mind at? To keep it on God. God bless you for it. You want the blessings of God's peace? You can't have that spirit of fear. The other day, or the other night, Sister Michaela, she come up here. I think it was uh, the Wednesday before her birthday. She said, Daddy, I want to sing my special song above all. Sure enough, she come over here and she's singing loud and proud. She got her white dress on, got new shoes on. She she picks out clothes at the at Coles or the mall or Walmart, wherever we are. She picks them out thinking of church. What can I wear to church? She's got a little boy in here that she's got a crush on who thinks he's a ninja. And, uh, and she, try, she tries to, to impress him. <laughs> Michaela ain't in here. I'll be, is Tristan in here? No. Okay. So I, one time I go outside and I see Tristan, you know. And he's like, Kayla, get your feet like this and go like this. And, you know, he's like, you know, doing all these karate moves and Kayla's like trying to copy him. And I'm like, Kayla, just try to not be that obvious. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, here I am. I'm watching little princess singing above all. And sometimes I'll get behind her and I'll just kind of sing in the background, just kind of build her confidence. But I didn't have to sing it all that loud. She was singing loud and proud. And you know what I thought? As a father, what greater joy and blessing than to see my little girl up there baptized in the Holy Ghost singing for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, what greater joy for Sister Mary than to see Seth singing on the platform. What greater joy for Jay and Sasha to see Sister Americus helping teach class and singing on the platform. Class got a little wild last week. America's went down there straightened that up. I'll tell you that. I saw it on the camera. <laughs> and they listened. Amen. Oh, and all these, all these kids. Haley, Nikita, amen. Pastor, you need something to teach? We'll do it. Amen. And then even our more seasoned saints, like Hannah. Amen. <laughs> Hannah. I'll teach. I'll teach. Sister Nancy, she said, oh, I'll teach, Pastor, if you need me to. Oh, praise the Lord. Thank God for willing vessels. Yeah, and Nathan said this about Sister Nancy. He said, Dad, I can tell she is taught before because she don't play. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give the Lord a hand clap. We see a lot of blessings we can forfeit with the spirit of fear. Amen. Yeah. Number two today, I want to tell you that the spirit of fear will keep you out of the will of God. 
the spirit of fear will keep you and I out of the will of God. Have you ever heard of somebody in the Bible named Moses? Moses, yeah. Moses was called to lead people. Amen. Moses was called to be a deliverer. But the spirit of fear tried to keep Moses right where he was. Amen. After God told Moses to stand before Pharaoh, Moses said in Exodus 4 and 10, But Lord, I'm not eloquent enough. I'm slow of speech. I stutter a lot. I have speaking fears and speaking problems. And besides that, the last time I was down in Egypt, I was wanted for murder. Last place Moses wanted to go was back to Egypt. But whenever God called Moses, the spirit of fear tried to interrupt him and keep him from going. Amen. That's what the spirit of fear does. It keeps you from going on in God's divine purpose and will for your life. Can you say amen? Oh, whenever God called us to start this church, I thought to myself, I'm only 27 years old. Everybody there is going to be older than me. And yet I'm supposed to teach older people about the Lord. Lord, they can be teaching me things. That's what my thinking was is, is a, a new pastor, first-time pastor. But I thought, Lord, I'm, I'm young. I've still got a lot to learn. And I still have a lot to learn. I'll tell you that. I still have a lot to learn. And uh, I thought, Lord, you, we got this building on Baker Street. But, Lord, I don't, I'm from Waldell. I don't come from drugs. I don't come from gangs. I don't come from any of the kind of stuff that's going on in the community. And, and Lord, I just don't see how you're going to do it. But we push past the spirit of fear. And God established New Hope Church. Amen. But we wouldn't be here today if a spirit of fear would have had its way over six years ago. Amen. That's what the spirit of fear wants to do. It wants to keep you from the blessings of God. It wants to keep you from fulfilling the will of God. How many of you know God has a plan for your life? God has a plan for your life. He has a plan for my life. He's got a plan for Nathan's life. He's got a plan for even Matthew's life. I'm not going to call him Brother Matthew. He don't like that. I'm going to call him Matt. All right, Matthew. <laughs> oh, but God has a calling on Matthew's life. God has a calling on Brother Tom's life. Ashley, God has a calling and a purpose for your life. You too, Tinker. Amen. Amen. And everybody else on this side. I know I only talk about people on this side, but you guys too. We've all got a calling and a purpose. Amen. 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 But the spirit of fear will do everything it can to try and stop it. Amen. We're almost done. God told Jonah to go to Nineveh and to tell the people to repent. But a spirit of fear got a hold of Jonah. Not only did Jonah hate the people of Nineveh, but he knew that by going to Nineveh, he would be putting himself in great danger. Nineveh was such a wicked city that outsiders and intruders would be killed and their skin would be filleted off of their physical bodies and nailed up to the outside walls of the city. If you think ISIS is bad, and it is, it's wicked, abominable, and evil, it ain't nothing can, to can be compared to the Ninevites. Wicked and evil people. Sure enough, God tells Jonah, Go to the Ninevites and preach repentance to them. But prejudice and fear to terrible things. How I many know prejudice is a wicked thing? Oh, well, come on. Prejudice is a wicked. It is the very, it's at the very height of pride. Amen. I'm white. So what? Well, I'm black. So what? Well, I'm brown. Who cares? We all bleed the same. We all got the 
the same old problems. Amen. Yeah, our cultures may be a little different, but we are all sinners in need of the same Savior whose name is Jesus. He's the Son of the living God, and He died for whosoever. Amen. Not just for the Jews, but for the Gentiles as well. Say, so what's a Gentile? Anybody not a Jew? <laughs> You can call this the church of the Gentiles. <laughs> you glad God died for you? Amen. Oh, he died for you. He loves you. But anyway, so Jonah, he, he goes the opposite direction. What happens? He gets eaten by a whale. Amen. He's out of the will of God. Now he's in a dark, stinky situation. Amen. But even in that well... He cried out to the Lord. Amen. He cried out to the Lord. And God spared his life. And you know what Jonah did? He fulfilled his purpose. And guess what happened? The Ninevites repented. Don't you ever think that there's no hope for America? Come on. Don't ever think that there's no hope for Pakistan. Don't ever think that there's no hope for Iran. North Korea. There's hope. It's found in Jesus. Can we all stand this morning? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's just lift up our hands. Sister Dolores, can you come to the piano today? Thank you, sis. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you. God, you haven't given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Is there anyone here today that says, Pastor, I have been battling a spirit of fear. It has been tormenting me. I can't even live my life because it's paralyzing my faith. I want to tell you, God wants to set you free today. God wants you to be set free. It's not His will that you live in bondage to fear, but it's His will that you have that sound mind that we talked about today. If you'd like special prayer, why don't you come? Why don't you come and we'll pray with you. We'll believe God to touch you, minister to you, and to help you. God wouldn't give such a word if there wasn't people battling fear. Yeah, but people are going to think I'm afraid. People are going to think I'm weak. And that's what the devil wants you to think. He'll throw pride up in your face to keep you from receiving the blessings of God. If you need special prayer, why don't you come? Let's believe God to help us today.
and touch Sister Diane. God, you have not given us that spirit of fear, but power. Holy Ghost, power, love, and a sound mind. Lord, touch. Touch my brothers and sisters, Lord, in Jesus' name. Touch my brothers and sisters. Give them strength.
Yes. Absolutely. Let's pray for Sister Debbie. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the throne room. Heavenly Father, we just come to you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we ask you that you would just minister to her, touch her physically. Lord, strengthen her. We come against cancer in the name of Jesus. You're the great physician, Lord. You're the healer. And Lord, we come to you asking that you would touch Sister Debbie today. In the name of Jesus, touch her with your strength and your presence. And Lord, may she know it was you that did it. Give her an instant touch right now. In the name of Jesus, give strength right now. Lord, we pray for Brother Carl. Touch my dear brother. Minister to him. Give him strength, good health. Minister to him. We thank you for all of your provision that you showed our our brother Louie. Thank you for that. And Lord, we ask you that as you blessed Louie, that you bless all of us, Lord, this coming week. Bless us with provision. But God, most of all, bless us with your presence. Your presence is what we long to have. Be with your people. We give you the praise. And just bless us tonight at our 4th of July celebration as we celebrate our independence, our freedoms. And Lord, we pray for those nations that don't have the freedoms like we have. Lord, I pray for Pastor John in Pakistan. Touch him with good health. Touch his daughter and daughters and his sons and his wife. Bless them, Lord. They're sweet people. Lord, we pray that you would be with the Christians in North Korea. God, open up walls. Tear down walls. Open up doors. Whether it just be through the internet or even, even that alone. Lord, open up doors to where your gospel can get in there. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless y'all. Love you.